Good evening. Please stand and take out your yellow sheets and join in singing Emmanuel. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have, mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Today's readings can be found in the Gather Book, page 883, 883. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God who rules by his strong arm here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Lord, let us 
reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey, and this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me and I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. In biblical and gospel tradition, John the Baptist is referred to as the precursor. Pre plus cursor. The cursor is not, in this case, the vertical line blinking on your computer screen, but the precursor means the one who comes before, the forerunner. John the Baptist arrives early. He arrives before Jesus with a message. John the Baptist, but is not just arriving early, he's also preparing the way or paving the way for Jesus. Have you noticed there's a lot of road construction around right now, especially this time of year? Because the road construction has to get done before winter time comes, it's urgent, it's problematic to pave when it gets too cold out, when we paved our parking lot, we got it done in November. And I remember kind of worrying about that it would get done in time before winter. So the urgency of physically plowing, not plowing, plowing isn't coming yet. I'm getting, you're getting ahead of yourself, Padre, okay. The urgency of physically paving the turnpike is in parallel to John the Baptist paving the way for Jesus. Both are supposed to happen before Christmas. This reminded me also of a brief summer job I had many years ago where I was working on paving of roads for a few weeks. In these projects, we were not simply destroying the whole road and just discarding what was there. I learned that this isn't what happens when a new road is paved, or in some cases not what happens. Rather, we were heating up the surface with this heating element, raking over the existing road, trying to reuse what we had, combine it with new fresh asphalt, and create a new path. Our work was the precursor to a new road. But we were not the only precursor. There was other work that happened even before we came because we were not just putting in a new road to make it look nice. We were there because there had been digging underground by the water company or PSC and G had dug underground. And once their digging and work was completed, then we could pave. We were the final precursor. John the Baptist is the final precursor, the final prophetic voice of the Messiah and reminding us that Jesus himself is the road. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is our way, our truth, and our life. John the Baptist is also the voice coming out, crying out in the desert. 
Now, there were other prophets who were similar to John the Baptist. One particular one in this case would be Moses, the prophet Moses, the prophet of the Exodus, and Moses had a really long road to follow, a 40-year road out of Egypt in slavery to the Promised Land. And through Moses' mission and preaching, the Jewish people were freed from slavery and came to the Promised Land. Moses was the guide, the guide with navigation in the desert. By giving navigation, he wasn't limiting the options. He was really just freeing the people, helping them to find a new way. Moses was also the prophet to receive the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, the Ten Commandments that we still follow that are part of our covenant as well. Ten Commandments that are not just disciplines to punish us, but also disciplines to help us really to be free. So there's both navigation and legislation that helps us to be free. That's Moses' mission. It's also John the Baptist's mission. He has a mission of navigation and legislation for the people, preparing the road and also helping them to repent. How do you feel about navigation and legislation? The navigation's good when that GPS is really working and it's getting you there as far as fast as possible to your destination. Legislation is good if it happens to be what you want to do, okay? But sometimes God's navigation or God's legislation is different than what I want to do. It may be different than what I want. So I need conversion to know what is right in God's eyes. And Advent is a time of conversion. It's not a really super long time of repentance like the 40 days of Lent, but it is meant to be a time of repentance and penitence. And this year you have the shortest Advent ever. I'm pitching you on that. You only have 21 days of penance because it's from December 3rd until December 24th, then it's over. We're, like, we're a third of the way through right now. You only, got two, you only have 14 more days, okay? But 14 more days to dig beneath the surface in your life and for me as well. Now Moses himself was a flawed and fragile figure with his own issues before God, not always listening to what God told him to do. Moses was held to such a high standard that Moses himself, due to his disobedience to God, never saw the promised land. In a se- John the Baptist picks up where Moses left off. John the ba- Moses never crossed the Jordan River into the promised land. John the Baptist is picking up where Moses left off because John the Baptist does cross the Jordan River. The people go into the Jordan River for baptism. John the Baptist is reminding the people and reminding us now about the uncomfortable process of digging, digging beneath the surface, of repentance, and doing that before the road is fully paved. I myself would would rather not see sometimes what is beneath the surface, my pride, my laziness, my selfishness beneath the surface, but by seeing these things, they can be healed by God. Becoming aware of these things, I can be transformed, you can be transformed. This is why we go to confession, why we're called to go to confession at least once a year, but it's good to go more often than that. I try to go at least once a month. And I try to be available for confession to you whenever you want. Before Mass, not just before the 5.30 Mass on Saturday, but before other Masses or after Mass. Or you can call up to make an appointment. And I will see you at a mutually convenient time. Convenient for you, in other words. Preparing the way of the Lord is not just a superficial exercise with new asphalt on the outside, but an internal exercise for us to kind of dig beneath the surface, do an examination of conscience, examine our lives, and connect to God without being afraid of the digging that is involved. We've got all the advertisements out there that make you afraid to dig. Call 811 before you dig. You don't have to call 811 before you dig, before you do an examination of conscience. But we are, called to, we are called to dig so that we can renew ourselves and connect to Jesus. It is urgent that we prepare the way of the Lord at this time of year before it gets too cold.
our profession of faith, the Nicene Creed, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to Christ the King, the firstborn of all creation. That we may be awake to the Lord's coming and God's presence in the church, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the hearts of our young people may be open to the call to service in the church, in religious life, and in the priesthood, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace to come in all places in the world affected by war and violence, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer in illness and pray for healing, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved deceased, Patricia DeSantis, Nicole Colombo, Angela Pela, Raymond Kinzel, Beverly Munch, James Flaherty, and for all whom we remember in our parish book of life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, for the eternal rest of Jean and Kathleen Mooney, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers and those we keep in our hearts through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord, for he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
Our Lady of Lords, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. sins of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us Take away the sins of the world, grant us peace, grant us
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our concert will start shortly. Please stay if you are able uh, for our Advent and Christmas choir concert with our children's choir and our adult choir. Our Christmas schedule, uh, well, tomorrow, our Knights of Columbus are holding a pancake breakfast fundraiser, $10 per person, $5 per person for children, all you can eat between 8.30 a.m. and 12 noon. You can stay for three and a half hours for $10 and eat all you can, okay? okay. So please come if you can, please bring your friends, family, uh, between 8.30 a.m. and 12 noon tomorrow, Knights of Columbus pancake breakfast. If you like the 5.30 Mass, there will be a 5.30 Mass every, every day, every Saturday. Next Saturday and Christmas Eve, there's a 5.30 Mass, but there's not just 5.30 Mass on Christmas Eve. There's a, four Masses on Christmas Eve, so please see the bulletin for the schedule for Christmas Eve. There is a Mass in Spanish at 7 p.m. Hay una misa de noche buena para el 24 24 de Diciembre, Christmas Eve Mass in Spanish at 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve. But please see the, the bulletin for the complete schedule. The Lord be with you. And with May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace. The Mass is ended. Amen.